Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge and I've got another treat for you today. This time I've got an older knife. This thing's been out for, I think, five years already. Different variations of it anyways. This is the CRKT Pazoda. And this is their largest version that they make. Um, I did a little bit of research uh, quite a while back on this knife because there's so many different styles of it. Uh, you got, uh, you got, uh, CRKT has a version that is uh, 2.1 inches. Uh, they've got another version that is 2.6 inches. They got this version that's just over three inches for the blade. Um, and they've got serrated versions and they've got a great variety of different versions. So if you just say Pazoda and you go and look it up, you can find these things for 14 bucks. But this version, what we have right here today, is the 6481C. The most expensive version that they make, but since it's been around for a while, I got really, really lucky. I went to my local UFA store. Those of you who live on the prairies in Canada know UFA stores. It's a farmer, rancher kind of uh, store. And there were some bucks and some CRKTs there. And so I walked over and lo and behold, this knife is sitting there for $14.99. The lowest price I could find online today is at Amazon for $24.03. That's US. In Canadian, that equals $32. So uh, my local UFA has it for half the price that Amazon does. I picked it up right away. So let's take a look at it. So the Pazoda, well, let's take a look at some more details about this knife. I'm really liking this. It's feeling really, really good. Uh, the usage that I've done with this knife, uh, being so light uh, at under four ounces, uh, feels good in the hand. Um, without the thumb studs, it's not much of a flicker for me, but I've even mentioned it in other videos. Uh, when I'm out doing stuff, I'm not a flicker, like to make my knife go whack really hard, really fast. That just draws attention. And uh, usually I don't want to draw attention uh, to my knife that I'm carrying. What do we got here? We've got a knife that is stylish. I showed it to a friend, a few friends of mine. And uh, I told them, you know, I, I took the pocket clip off so that, you know, it was closed. And I asked them to take a look at it without opening it and tell me what they thought of this knife. And believe it or not, some of them didn't recognize that this was the Pazoda, I guess because it's so uh, old, you know, so many years ago that they saw this knife come out that they forgot about it or whatever. Or it just stumped them that there's this, you know, decent looking knife, decent weight that looks good. And, um, you know, they thought it felt good and was a reasonable knife. And then they opened it up and saw CRKT and go, oh, that's the Pazoda. And yeah, it's a nice knife. I'm liking it and I'm carrying it quite a bit. It's very discreet in the pocket, except for this clip. The clip size is bigger than I think it needs to be. I think they could have got away with a clip that could have ended, where's my pencil? I think if they would have made it end right about there an inch shorter than it than it is. There's a good ruler. Cut it off, cut an inch of it off, and that'd be adequate. You don't need super long clips. I don't know what manufacturers are thinking all the time with the size of the clips that they make. Those of you who remember my four and a half inch bladed or cutting edge, this real steel talking, taken, taken, talking. Look at the clip compared to that knife. You know, it's just little, and the knife is like twice the weight, twice the size, <laughs> big beast of a knife, and the pocket clip is totally functional. It works really, really well. There, uh, There's no need to change that pocket clip, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, CRKT could have put in a smaller pocket clip. This pocket clip doesn't really function as a frame lock uh, protector to stop you from overextending the frame lock. Um, it's made strong enough. This, this frame lock just doesn't have, um, 
it has enough spring in it that you're not going to push it too far to, to, to break it. Not easily, at least. Um, you know, if there's some adrenaline flowing in some emergency situation, maybe. But uh, under normal circumstances, you're not going to hyperextend that frame lock at all. Um, let's look at the other details on here. We've got a hollow grind up for that um, three inches. And the three inches is the length that well it's a weird number they put three inches on the um on the spec sheet and three inches goes to right about there you can see that little bit of pencil that i drew on there about halfway between this tiny little sharpener's toil and the end of the blade end of the handle that's where the three inch mark is so it's just under three inches of cutting edge but more than three inches of blade so if you're in a jurisdiction where they measure right to the frame this guy is just a little bit too big for you. And I just wish they would have had this whole cutting edge come back, you know, another eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more, just to give you a little more cutting surface. You know, it, all other things being equal, there's a change that they could have made. Uh, and, you know, you'd have more blade and you're not going to rest your hand, finger in that spot anyway. Well, you can, but, you know, I certainly wouldn't. It's just making for a hot spot. Uh, so I use the knife this way, and so you've got a long ways off before that blade really starts. Not really a problem, just something that they could have done better. And, um, you know, yeah, that's what it is. We've got a drop point swedge here, a nice riser coming up, some good jimping in there that actually gives your thumb some nice purchase in there. So we've got a really nice coated blade. I haven't seen any scratches come on here yet. Um... I don't know, am I not using it heavy enough? Uh, like stressing it enough, cutting enough hard stuff or whatever? I don't know. But this titanium coating, uh, that's what they're calling it, has been keeping up, maintaining really well. Uh, no problem with that. The hollow edge, the hollow grind, I should say, has been very useful for cutting and slicing. And the fact that it's not a very deep knife from edge to the spine also helps it with slicing through a lot of uh, smaller things. Works really well that way. Uh, the pillars are just your basic um, bars, nothing fancy to them. And you know, you got two pillars there, and then this stop pin just rests in there. It doesn't screw in, so the stop pin doesn't offer any support to the knife itself. It just stops the blade. And then you've got your pivot screw, which is underneath the pocket clip here, uh, if you want to go ahead and make an adjustment to it. The lockup is. There we go. The lockup is right at the halfway point. If you measure uh, the leading edge of the frame lock here, it comes right halfway across the blade, uh, which is very good on a brand new knife. Gives it room to wear and yet provides a lot of security right out of the box. We've got uh, two nylon washers in here. You know, lockup is good. It's it's solid. Uh, there's a tiny, tiny bit of play side to side. Nothing up and down. And I found that to be true in other nylon washers knives, uh, that you get a little bit of side to side play, especially when the washers are small. So you can see that pencil line there, that's the size of the washers. They are only that much bigger than the pivot. If they would have made washers that were out to here, or even just one of them, you know, just a little bit bigger, um, it would offer quite a bit more security side to side. I do have spare washers. I might change one of them out. Of course, not on the side where the frame lock is because it can get in the way over there, but just on this side here on the show side, put a little bit larger of a washer. I'd have to check and see if it's going to cause it uh, more friction so that it doesn't open and close as easily. We'll find out about that. Right now, I have not adjusted the pivot at all and I've not lubricated it either. And, you know, it's working, you know, just fine. The blade centering is uh, very, very good. It's not perfect, but it's very good. You can see it right on that shot, how close it is to perfect. It's off to this uh, side just a little bit. And the lanyard hole is plenty big enough to put uh, paracord through there without any issue at all. This is 550 paracord. Um... So yeah, there you go, the Pizzota. It It's, you know, this side, it's all that uh, titanium coating kind of color. And on the show side, you've got that brushed 
steel kind of color. I, I'll, I'll wipe that pencil marks off of there. It works really well. Let's do some cut tests. This is just uh, nylon strapping from uh, getting packages. Uh, great little knife for that. We've got, uh, well, I showed you the paracord already, didn't I? Well, let's see how well it cuts. Let's layer it up like four times or something. Four layers of paracord and it zipped through all of them. No problem at all. And you know, you can do the slicing kind of cuts. It does that without any uh, hesitation, no stress there. Some thicker banding, try that. Easy, easy, it just cuts very, very well. The, uh, how, how well it slices through paper. Copy paper, that push cut, uh, there was a little wet spot on the paper there. But at the price point, you know, if you can find a UFA store uh, for $15, you can get a knife that normally sells for twice that. And that's the regular price on the wall. I could, I, I was really surprised when I saw that. Well, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing and liking my videos. And remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.